community to gather together at this consecrated place to draw nigh with the people of God that we might together draw nigh to you. We thank you, Lord, for the great privilege of worship, of communion and fellowship with the great God, the King of the universe. We thank you, Lord, that you filled our hearts with joy unspeakable and full of glory. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of voice, be to lift our voices and sing high praises to the King. Thank you, Lord God, for those who've drawn together today. We pray, Lord, that you will meet with us, that you would saturate this place with your presence. We pray, O oh God, of glory that we will sense your heaviness, your glory, and that he would draw us closer to you. We pray that you would move in the hearts of, of your people to the degree, Lord, that they would just say, Lord, whatever you would have me to do, I'll do they would sense, Lord, just the great, great desire to do your will. We pray for that man or woman, boy or girl, that's never come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That this morning might be their defining moment. This morning might be the time they recognize their need for a Savior. We pray for that backslider. They might come back today to the point of their commitment. We pray, Lord, that you would so fill us with your presence we leave this place, Lord, your glory will be indeed resounding in our soul. And we would say, surely God was in that place. For we sensed his presence, move in a mighty way to your own glory. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have your Bibles handy, turn with me this morning to the sixth chapter of the Old Testament book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 6. If you've not been with us before, or if you've not been here in some time, for the past, past about 10 weeks, we've been in a chapter-by-chapter chapter study of the Old Testament book of Joshua. It's a book of conquest. And we learn as we study this book how the children of Israel were able to make it to the promised land, the land of Canaan, the land that flowed with milk and honey, and how God fulfilled the promise to the children of Israel that he had made to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob, to those great patriarchs of the Old Testament. Joshua chapter 6. I'd like to start reading with verse 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went in and none came in, or none went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus shall thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns. And the seventh day, as ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. And it shall come to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout. And the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and come past the city, and let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken unto the people, that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns passed on before the Lord and blew with the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. Now drop down with me, if you please, at verse 16. And it, shall, and it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city, and the city shall be accursed, even it and all that, that are therein. To the Lord, only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she did hire the messengers that we sent. And ye in any wise... Keep yourselves from the accursed things, lest ye make 
yourselves accursed when you take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel cursed and troubled. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priest blew up the trumpets, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted with a great shout. The wall fell down flat. So the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. May the Lord's rich blessing be upon his word may be sanctified in our hearts. I'd like to speak this morning from the subject, just simply, and the walls came tumbling down. And the walls came tumbling down. Some of you are familiar with that old Negro spiritual. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho. Jericho. Joshua fit the battle of Jericho, and the walls came tumbling down. Great story in the Old Testament of how God moved in behalf of his people. And he demonstrated his power and his might as he fulfills a promise that he had made hundreds of years earlier to a man by the name of Abraham, and that he confirmed to Abraham's offspring, Isaac, and to Jacob, and to the patriarchs. And as Peter writes in the New Testament, God is not slack concerning his promises as some men count slackness. In other words, God will not renege on his promise. That God is able to fulfill, to bring to pass that which he has promised. And that should be an encouragement to us that we serve a God that is not only willing, but he's able. He's able. You know, when my children uh, were younger, and I would tell them I was going to do something, and when they really wanted me to come through, they said, Dad, do you promise? They wanted to bind me with an oath. Dad, do you promise? We really need for you to come through this time. And whatever it takes, we want you to keep your promise. And no matter how hard I tried, every now and then, I just couldn't come through. I promised them a big vacation, and every now and then, the money just wasn't acting right, Brother John. And I just, cu just couldn't come through. And there were times that I have to admit that I've had to break promises to my children. And I have to tell them, I'm sorry. I really wanted to do it. I really was, was truthful and honest, but I just can't come through this time. Things just aren't cooperating like I wish they, they would. But it's encouraging to know that, that God is a God who never has to break a promise. There's nothing that's ever too hard for him. There's never any problem with the finances. His schedule is never too tight. There's never any pressures that are inundating him to where he cannot fulfill and keep his word to his children. He is not slack concerning his promises. He will not renege on his promise. That which he has promised, he's faithful and he's just, he will also bring to pass. And we see that this morning in Joshua chapter 6. But on last week, we saw that Joshua had an interesting encounter. If you looked at verses 13 through 15, after the Lord had brought them across the Jordan River, and God had parted the Jordan River by his mighty power, the children of Israel had walked over on dry ground, and now they stood on the west banks of the Jordan. And there in front of them was this imposing obstacle, the city of Jericho. And Jericho was the stronghold city in the land of Canaan. And when they came across the Jordan right there at Gilgal, Jericho was almost directly in front of them. And if they were going to subdue the land, if they were going to be able to capture the land, they were going to have to subdue Jericho. Jericho was a formidable obstacle because it was a fortified city. It was surrounded by two very large stone walls. And the children of Israel had never fought a battle where they had waged war against a fortified city. All of the wars that Joshua had led them in, they fought out on the plains, in the open, where they could use their skill, their speed, their agility and their finesse to confound their enemy. But now Jericho was a fortified city. It was a formidable fault, and it was thought to be an impregnable city. And so the king of Jericho knew that the children of Israel were coming into his territory. Forty years earlier, Joshua had sent two spies to spy out the land. Or, or 40 years earlier, Moses had sent 12 spies to spy out the land. And just a few months before Joshua was going to take on the city, he had sent two spies to spy out the land. 
and the king of Jericho.